Lion? Lion, wake up! No sleepy on the job! Uh, I jolt awake. A uh, bright light in my eyes and someone's hand on my shoulders. Well, I block it out my arm. Vanessa finally turns off her flashlight and lightly scoffs in annoyance. How long was I asleep on this table? Lowering my arm, I have a small toolbox in front of me. My phone is resting where I had my head laid down. Its shape is probably imprinted onto my face right now. Good lord, Lion. When was the last time you slept? Uh, I don't know. Probably a week ago. I don't know! Vanessa sighs. Whatever. No one's here but us anyway. I'll keep quiet if you just do your job, alright? Yeah, sure. Alright, get to it. Vanessa walks off as I stand up and stretch, feeling my joints pop when I raise my arm above my head. Deciding not to waste any more time, I pick up my toolbox and phone before heading through the massive doors leading into the daycare. The daycare's bright lights and rainbow colors are practically blinding compared to the rest of the pizza plex. Maybe I just haven't fully woken up yet. Time to get this over with. I open up a panel behind the desk and cringe at a mass of wires in the wall. As much as I wish I could, I can't rush through this. I'll have to deal with each generator one at a time. Whatever. If it means I get to sleep sooner, I'll do it. Click at the end of each cable in the correct order to proceed. Why is it so goddamn messy? What the hell? Okay, let's see. This should be one. Okay, then two is... Wow, this is a mess. Okay, that's two. Alright, uh, and three and four. Staring back up, I stretch again. Palms on my back as I let out a tired sigh. That is until I hear the faint sound of why I think our gears and other mechanical bits turning, followed by something landing in a ball pit near the back. I'm pretty sure it's just a daycare attendant. After all, they should be the only other thing in here, and a small stage leading into their room is directly above the ball pit. Now that I know a lot about them, the staff hasn't said much. You know, that makes me wonder, you know, like, every time we saw the daycare attendant, like, swooping into the ball pit, like, wh what if there was a child underneath that? Like, how heavy, how heavy is a daycare attendant? I hope that's not heavy enough to, like, cause any harm, but still, I, th th now that this has been pointed out to me, I am a bit concerned. Since I'm new here, I haven't even met them yet, nor have I met the other animatronics, like the Glamrocks or DJ. Most of the robots I have become acquainted with have been the staff bots all over the building. I start walking to the ball pit, scanning it for signs of movement as I stand on the edge. That is until... Whoa! But... Uh, sun drop jump scare? Hey there, friend! Yeah, I don't remember seeing you around. Are you new here? Something or someone jumps up in front of me, and I'm suddenly lifted up the ground... How strong is sun drop? Before I can even answer, I notice his eyes turn a light blue color, scanning me. I'm stunned to silence, staring at the robot in front of me as he steps out of the ball pit, holding me from underneath my arms as if I weigh nothing. Uh, yeah, can you put me down first? Uh, I have a feeling this might be important, so I'm going to save. Uh, let's see. Um, wait, what did he, what did he say again? Uh, I completely forgot. Uh, let's see, he started to silence, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh yeah, duh, okay, so I gotta say, like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah? Ooh, that's so fun! It's not every day I see a new member of staff here. It gets pretty empty when the kids all go home, you know? It'll definitely have to get used to how energetic this guy seems. He finally sets me back down, making sure I'm able to stand on both feet before letting go. Thanks, and yeah, I'm new here. Just finish out my first week, actually. Oh, and how's it been? Good, I hope. Uh, yeah, it's gone pretty smoothly so far. I saw walking back to the desk, but a tall robot decides to follow me. By the way, could you tell me a preferred name? My name's Sun, but people come up with all sorts of nicknames. Like Sunny, Sunray, Sundew. Some of the kids even call me Sundrop, like the candy. Oh, not gonna lie, I thought your name was Sundrop until now. That's fine. A lot of people do that. Name kind of stuck over time, which is fine by me. Cool. Uh, my preferred name is Lion, by the way. Well, it's nice to meet you, Lion. I can't help but smile a bit. A duty call, so I make my way to one of the computers on the desk. I can faintly see his face reflected on the screen as he watches what I'm doing. What you need the light off for? I have to test all the generators in here, make sure they're working. Whoever messed up with them last time left them a mess, so I have to do it one at a time. I blame Gregory! Uh-huh. 
Considering how wordy he's been so far, such a short answer tells me something's up. Then again, I just met the guy. I could be overanalyzing. Uh, something wrong? Ah, just notice how tired you look. That's all. I'll be right back. Gonna get something for you. Uh, why? Just something to help me, me. Just something to help carry you through the night. Judging by how many wires and generators you have to deal with, I have a feeling you might be here for a while. Fair enough. Sun smells before walking off somewhere. I put in the command to turn off the power in the daycare. The music once playing from the speakers on the ceiling come to a halt. Silence blanketing over the massive daycare as the computer screens become my only light source. Removing my flashlight from my belt, I turn it on as I start making my way towards the play structures, since that's where the generators are located for some reason. It's eerily quiet as I try finding the structure with the first generator. The lack of true ambience forces my footsteps to echo. The glowing red light of one of the generators enters my sight, so I continue. Somewhere above me, I hear gears turning. I shine my flashlight towards the ceiling, only to see nothing there. Uh, son? I flinch at the noise, frantically shining my light to see what's there. That didn't sound like sun. Sun, are you there? Ah! <laughs> oh god! Uh, I got jump scared by freaking moon drop! Oh my god, you sexy, sexy robot! <laughs> <laughs> I've dropped my flashlight and I'm sitting on the ground after stumbling back from being startled. In front of me is the robot I've seen on the Moondrop posters, giggling hysterically. He seems proud of himself. I sigh, pick up my flashlight, and get back up to continue what I was doing. Well, if I wasn't awake before, I definitely am now. He finally stops laughing after I say that. He makes a noise that sounds like he's clearing his throat before he starts following me. <laughs> Sorry for the scare. I couldn't help myself. Sure. I take the first path in the play structure, I see, hoping to find the first generator sooner rather than later. You're going the wrong way. Am I? I turn around and it has he has arms crossed as he leans against the structure. Yep, yeah, I could lead you to the generator, if that would make you feel better. I think about it for a second. If this guy's anything like Sun, hopefully he actually means what he says. Fine. I crawl back out of the structure and he starts leading me down a different path. He clearly knows his way around, since we find a generator rather easily. There you go! He sits beside me as I go turn it on, his glowing red eyes watching me as I do my job. Maybe it's just me, but don't you think those red eyes are kinda intimidating for a daycare attendant? Yes, I've been told that before. It was a bug that made them look like this, but that's been resolved. The red eyes stuck, but they're not hurting anyone. Fair enough. The red does look kinda cool with the blue and white. Why, <laughs> thank you. I roll my eyes, a faint smile on my face. Now that I think about it, I never told you my name, did I? I already know. It's Lion. Oh, did Sun tell you? In a way. We're technically the same. Uh, what do you mean? You two do look similar. What do you mean? We are the same body, I mean. Sunny can still see and hear what's everything that's going on as we speak. Ah, so he was in on the prank too. <laughs> no, he's still lecturing me for it. <laughs> Serves you right. I was just messing with you. But if you want... I won't do it again. For now. Don't. Moon laughs a bit, leaning against the wall of the structure. Why do you have to look like this? Why? God, you have no right looking this hot. I do think you should continue with that job of yours, though. Right. Right on. Uh, focusing back on the generator, I flip the switch and watch as the red light on the device turns green. Well, looks like it works. I flip it again before making my way back out of the structure and I hear Moon following close behind. Setting up straight, I attach my flashlight to my belt before stretching my arms above my head. I sigh, dropping back to my sides as I go to turn the lights on from the desk. I hear the lights turn back on and the music of daycare start playing as I turn around and flinch at the sight of sun already there, smiling brightly. Hello again! Hey, so you two just switch out whenever you need to? 
Nah, it depends on whether the lights are on or not. I'm in charge when the lights are on. And Mooney's in charge when they're off. I still don't like that he decided to scare you, though. Weirdly enough, the sight of him irritated with his arms crossed is weirdly endearing. Ah, don't worry about it. I'm over it. Sun just pouts, turning his head away from me. I smile at the sign. Why do they keep the generators in there anyway? Don't you think it will be kind of dangerous to keep the generators in the place uh, kids will be playing in? Well, that's just a temporary thing. They've been out of commission, so thankfully they couldn't hurt anyone anyway. And when exactly are those things getting moved? That looks like he's about to respond, but go silent for a minute. I can literally hear the gears turning in his head. He just shrugs. Well, isn't that reassuring? I turn back to the desk so I can keep track of my progress. On it is a short checklist to keep track of how many generators are working. I start looking around for a pen when Sun sticks his hand in front of my face, holding one with a cute little dinosaur in the cap. Here you go! I smile at the gesture, taking the pen so I can mark my progress. This doesn't look Fazbear approved! <laughs> Thanks. Alright, here we go again. I go back to the cable, so I got a tangled mess so I still have to deal with. God damn it, Gregory! Oh, uh, <laughs> Wire, there's so many goddamn wires! Okay, that's one. Okay, two is swirling up this. What the, is that two? Yep, that's correct. Uh, next is three. Uh, okay, that's three. And the fourth one is over here. I set up and I take a look at my work. Time to do it all again, I guess. As you go turn the lights off again, I hear music blasting from somewhere else. Which is weird, since usually the radio is off and the pizza plex is closed for the night. Any idea what that music is? That's the DJ! He makes his own music! So it's not out of the ordinary to hear it during the night when everyone's gone home. I'd love to be friends with him, but I'm too busy to leave this place most of the time. Really? Yep. When was the last time you left this place? Okay, okay, well, since technically I never left. But every hour when the power gets rerouted, Mooney goes on patrol around the pizza plex to make sure we don't get any intruders. He says the DJ makes for good company. I rub my eyes, feeling my lack of sleep catch up with me again. The stress of a new job is really taking a toll on my sleep schedule, I think. Uh, why do they need a moon to patrol the place, intruders? I've gotta go with the first one. Why do they need Moon to patrol the place? Isn't that what staff bots are for? Staff bots uh, help alert Moon to anything or anyone that shouldn't be there. I let out a yawn as I go back to the computer. That's cool. Switching the lights off, the daycare once again descends into mostly silence. I hear gears whirring behind me as Moon hums slightly. Still tired, huh, Lion? Oh boy, what gave that away? <laughs> yeah, I'll go for the first option. Oh boy, what gave that away? You look like you're gonna pass out. I wish I could. I hear Moon step away for a minute. Also, like, I have a mean- I have a feeling I'm not getting any, like, affection points of Moon, which is kind of sad. Like, am I not being nice? Yawning again, I take my flashlight off my belt as I start approaching the police structures. Stopping once I'm a few feet away from the desk. I'll wait for Moon to come back, since I have a feeling I get lost if he doesn't help me find the other generators. Hearing the sound of gears whirring above me, I point my flashlight towards the ceiling. It's easier to find this time, probably because he's not start trying to startle me again. He lowers himself to the floor, a long cable hooked onto his bag from the ceiling. So that's how he flies around the place. There you are. Here, take this. He holds out an already open soda can for me to take. A grape flavored fizzy fast, to be specific. Thanks. No problem. Sunny meant to get it for you earlier. But I had something different in mind. He has a smug grin on his face. Yeah, so you decided to scare me half to death? <laughs> Come on, live a little. I roll my eyes as I take a long sip of the carbonated heart attack in a can. Check checking the watch on my other hand. I can see it's already nearing one in the morning. Forty hours spent awake, I've gotten surprisingly little done. Great. Wanna help with the other generators or what? Moon's expression didn't change. He just stares at me for a moment before speaking. You sound exhausted. I am exhausted. Shouldn't you take a break then? I take another sip of soda, raising an eyebrow. And do what? 
Well, I have my hourly patrol to take care of. You could always tag along. You know what? Yeah, sure. I can't have to keep working. You know what? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Just as long as Vanessa doesn't see me, I guess. Moon's smile grew ever so slightly at my statement, but seemed more of a genuine smile than his gremlin look from earlier. I doubt that'll happen. The pizza plex is a big place, so the chances of running into us are rather small. I know, but still. Trust me, it won't happen. Besides, you need to take it easy for a while. It'll look like you'll pass out if you stand here for too long. I'd love to if I didn't have a job to do. The cable's still attached to his back. Moon hovers ever so slightly above the ground before approaching me. Not right now, you don't. Without another word, Moon wraps his arms around my torso before the cables lift him up, at least 40 feet above the ground. Holy! Panicked, I cling onto him as I stare at the ground far beneath us. Moon doesn't seem to react, simply navigating through the air, carrying me with him. Don't worry, I won't drop you. You better not! Moon clearly knows his place like the back of his hand, because it only takes around a few minutes to uh, reach the atrium with the giant holograms of the glam rock still active despite the pizza plaques being closed for tonight. They pass over a few security bots who pay us no mind. Occasionally, one will look up at us and then continue on with the same blank expression as every other bot. I eventually start to get used to being this high off the ground. Moon says nothing as he scans the area for intruders, thankfully seeing nothing out of the ordinary. Moon lands on the railing on the third floor of the atrium, likely about to change directions and head somewhere else. That is, until an alarm bell starts blaring from one of his speakers, and he suddenly turns to look in a different direction. Hopping up the railing, Moon sets me down before hovering off the ground again. Stay here. One of the staff bots alerted me to an intruder. Before I can get another word in, Moon leaves, pushing up the railing and giving himself a boost as he flies off. Sighing, I look up when I see another staff bot look at me, seemingly confused. Just guessing by the way it stops and tilts his head when it sees me. <laughs> it's hard to tell what these guys are thinking when they basically can't emote. I, I'm, I'm just curious though. Like, I, I hear that there is a secret ending to this game. Like, does that secret ending, like, involve me romancing the staff bots? Can I romance the staff bots? Like, can that please be a staff bot dating sim? <laughs> I need that. Um, you'll tell me if Vanessa's nearby, right? You saw nothing. I'll go for the first one. You'll tell me if Vanessa's nearby, right? The bot stares. I stare back. <laughs> I nod an understanding before going to sit in one of the booths at L Chips. There's an L Chips here? Staring at a menu on the other side of the restaurant, I remember something important. I haven't eaten anything since, what, this morning? Maybe that's why I feel so out of it. If only I could inhale the pictures of food on the wall. I try the next best thing and search behind a counter for basically anything that's edible. I find an unopened bag of nachos. Good enough. I head back to the booth, opening a bag of chips and eating my makeshift lunch. Peering back into the atrium, the bot isn't there anymore. From where I'm sitting, it looks like a number of stat bots around seem pretty sparse in general. Maybe they're gone to wherever Moon is. Not that I know where he went anyway. I don't think too much of it. Simply continuing to fuel up on chips while listening to the droning ambience of the many bright lights in the atrium. I can feel my ears ringing from th the silence. That and the sound of me eating the chips alone becomes deafeningly loud. The lack of ambience is almost unbearable. Uh, setting up, I go to throw away the now empty bag of chips. One hand on my head as my vision goes blurry for a moment. Walking back to the railing, I lean against it, looking down and squeezing my eyes shut as I try to quell this nauseating feeling. But I open them again, my vision is still fading in and out, while a strange red overlay seems to wash over what little I'm still able to see. Stumbling back, I look around for one of the staff bots for help, disoriented by whatever is happening to me. But set off a staff bot. What I vaguely see approaching me from the right is the grey humanoid silhouette, and two bright red eyes fixated on me. Startle, I make a run for the stairs, hoping to find a staff bot somewhere nearby. My vision still hasn't fixed itself, in fact it's gotten worse as I misstep and stumble onto the first short flight of stairs. I force myself back up, using Rayleigh for support before he, something grabs the back of my shirt. Uh, wait, huh? I don't, I don't know if I want to fight back, but I don't know if I, I'm going to make another save. I will hold on to the railing. I don't let go of the railing as I look behind me. Now more clearly seeing the face of a gray rabbit costume with bright red eyes and a gaping black grin. 
What are you? Why are you cute? I can't even hear my own voice. The ringing drowns it completely as what as whoever it is successfully drags me away from the railing. Uh, back up the stairs, I grab at anything I can. Reduce the ragdoll. It gets hotter and hotter for me to try and escape as I'm dragged back into L chips. The ringing is overpowered by the sound of my own heart pounding in my head. We're nearing the kitchen at the back of the small restaurant, blocked off by a metal door. I'm running out of time. I try kicking my attacker, but they seem unfazed, using just one arm to drag me back as the other one wields a large kitchen knife. They're going to kill me! I'm just barely able to cling onto the corner of the counter, try to buy whatever time I can. Uh, I'm gonna call out for help. Also, I'm sorry for stealing your chips. I'm sorry. <laughs> I try calling for someone, anyone to help me. I'm sure if I can even be hurt as my grip on the counter starts to slip. Uh, call for a staff bot. My attacker has both hands on the back of my shirt and is pulling hard. One of my hands slipped from the counter. I can't hang on much longer. I'm going to die. Moon! Moon, help me! My hand slips from the counter and I'm dragged back. I'm practically clawing the floor, but a costume stranger yanks me back before pushing open the door to the kitchen and throwing me in. There's no lights on in here, so I'm almost completely drowned in darkness as I land on the cold tile floor, save for the small beam of light coming from beyond the door. Looking behind me, I see that bit of light start to slip away as the attacker's silhouette starts to merge into darkness, their red eyes being the only thing I see. And probably the last thing I'll see. <laughs> the beam of light from beyond the door floats back into the room, and the grey rabbit is nowhere to be seen. My vision finally starts to clear up as I look towards whatever landed nearby. Ah, uh, Oh! This is a position! <laughs> A uh, different pair of red eyes look back at me and lunges at me before two familiar robotic arms grab me and pull me out of the kitchen and on into the atrium. I can finally see clearly, and the ringing noise is completely replaced by my racing heartbeat. Flying back to the atrium of the daycare, Moon's grip on me is so strong that he's on the verge of crushing my spine. It finally starts to slow down as we pass over the daycare wall, a once eerie silence hanging over us. He makes a smooth landing on the floor. The cables on his back unhook it and retreat it back to the ceiling as I'm placed onto the ground. He doesn't let go though. It almost feels like his arms are shaking. Maybe that's me. I can't see his face. He's slouched in a way where my head is almost resting on his shoulder and he's staring at the floor. His arms finally loosen, as if he just let her relieve sigh before letting go of me. I myself can't find the words for just for what just happened. Whenever I open my mouth to speak, my mind completely blanks. Instead, I drop to the floor. My fight or flight is kicked in, and my hands are shaking uncontrollably. Moon's expression darkens slightly. Does he want to say something? His faceplate turns slightly as he walks over to something on the floor a few yards away. My flashlight. He silently picks it up and returns it to me. I'm pretty sure I can hear his fans revving up. It looks like he's deep in thought. He sits down in front of me. Resting his faceplate on the palm of his hand. Did she hurt you? I fidget with the flashlight a bit. Battery's dead. No, thank god. Almost. I'm gonna go for the first one. No, thank god. Good. I'm sorry for not being there sooner. It's fine. You should let me stay here. Um, it's fine. You could have died. Well, I didn't. You still showed up quickly enough that it didn't happen, so... Barely. Why do you care so much, anyway? I basically just got here, and well, you barely know me. This is my job. I just don't look after kids that come in and out of daycare. Everyone that steps into the building is my responsibility. And now, that includes you too, Lion. Moon suddenly gets back up and walks over to the massive doors by the desk. Where are you going? Locking this place up. Whoever attacked you is still in the building. I can't leave you alone here to go deal with it myself, and bringing you with me is too risky. I watch as Moon uh, moves various objects in front of the door, from desk chairs to smaller play structures, basically anything decently heavy enough to barricade the door. Can't you just lock it? Already dead, but I'm not taking any chances. Eventually, I'm able to set up again and go over to the charging docks by the desk to recharge my flashlight. Lion? Huh? I'm guessing you'd rather get out of here sooner than later, right? On a rush to leave by myself, really. Yeah, kind of. Wait, wait, what, what did you say again? Uh, you'd rather get out of here sooner than later, right? Uh, not in a rush to leave by myself, really. I live alone, so... Oh. 
Still, you can't stay here forever. Ugh. Whatever you want to keep going with the generators. Just say the word. All right. I removed my flashlight from the charging dock, and sure enough, it works. I turn it on and put it back in structures. Shall we? Moon nods, and we waste no time finding the next generator. Thankfully, it works just fine now. With that over with, we go back to the desk to turn the lights back on. Speaking of, I wonder how Sun's taking all of this. Moon did say they can both see and hear everything that's happening, even if they're not the one piloting the robot body. I catch a glimpse of the time as I'm turning the lights back on. 2 a.m. The daycare is slowly lit up, and as usual, the music comes back on. Even with the cheerful music, the mood remains heavy as ever. However, I've been given no time to think as I spun back around by the worried sun, frantically checking me for any injuries. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Are you sure you're okay, Lion? You poor thing, you must have been so scared. I'm so sorry we weren't there sooner. If only we knew, we would have. Don't worry, I'm okay. Hey, it's already over. Don't worry, I'm okay. Sun! Don't worry about it, I'm okay. Sun still looks guilty. He continues to check my arms and torso to see if I'm hurt, but at least he isn't pulling me around like some ragdoll. I have to worry. Keeping everyone safe here is my job. If I can't protect one person, then... Sun is visibly distraught. His rays are practically drooping. Seems that didn't help much. Uh, come in with words, come in with a hug, continue with your job. I'll come in with a hug. It's a bit of a reach considering how tall Sun is compared to me. How tall is Sun? But how tall is Sun? I always, I always assumed that he's a short king. Oh, even when kneeling. I managed to wrap my arm around Sun's torso, hoping that will calm him down. Sun doesn't say anything, but instead hugs me back. His eternal fans getting much louder. He has one arm around my torso and one hand softly holding the back of my head. It's a gentle hug. It feels safe. We say nothing for a few minutes. I was trying to calm him down, but honestly, this hug is a huge comfort for me too. No wonder they're trusted with kids. Even as an adult, I feel an odd sense of security around them. Considering what just happened, it feels nice. Question. Huh? What was Moon alerted to anyway? A uh, little boy snuck in to see Freddy again. He seems irritated when he says that. Again? Yeah, this isn't the first time the little rule breaker snuck in here. Something tells me that security isn't as strict as you would think. So if a can manage to sneak in more than once. But if he just wants to see Freddy, then I don't see a problem with that. It's not like the kid's hurting anyone, and I doubt Freddy's gonna let him get into trouble. <laughs> he seems almost playfully bitter. What did this kid even do? Maybe I should ask later. So I have to keep going to generators. I don't get very far though, before I'm suddenly picked up by Sun. What the? Where are we going? Sun manages to carry me with one arm, using the other to move various objects in front of the massive door. Making sure no one's getting in here. Could you put me down though? Nope. After all that, there's no way I can leave you on your own now. What if that person finds you? And we're not around! Sun, we're in the same room. If that person somehow gets in, I'm pretty sure you'd notice. Looking up at Sun's face, I notice that the long cables. Uh, lower from the ceiling, I'd hook onto Sun's back. You hurt, Moon. I don't take any chances. We suddenly jerk upwards, and I'm lifted into the air along with Sun, albeit much faster and more recklessly than Moon. <laughs> Wait, I, what, what, what do you mean more recklessly? Hey, at least let me call Vanessa first. I don't think she even knows about that freak since the stab bots didn't react at all. Oh gosh, you're right. Okay, we're making it quick. Sure thing. Sun suddenly changes directions in the air as we start heading back towards the desk. However, I think Sun dropped from this height a little too early as we basically start free falling towards the ball pit. Oh shit! Uh, grab onto Sun! I'm just barely able to grab onto Sun before gravity takes me. We're both tangled in the cable though. Once again, we're stunned into silence. Just when I thought things were calming down, I feel my heart going a mile a minute from adrenaline. And Sun's internal fans are on full blast. I keep clinging onto Sun for dear life as we're slowly lowered into the ball pit. Clutching my chest with one hand over my racing heart, I'm able to get out of the tangled mess pretty easily. Sun is clearly having a harder time though, just th thrashing in the tangled cable. Sun, chill! Let me let me get you out of that. No, uh, uh, no thanks. I'm fine. Yeah, I can get out of here. I, sta I sigh, standing in silence for about a minute as Sun fails to get out himself. 
Son. Son finally stops, his faceplate drooping at defeat. Do you want my help now? Fine. All right then, hold on for a second. Getting him out of the cable isn't hot. Once I'm done, I unhook the cable from his back and let it retreat back to the ceiling. I give Sun a minute before I decide to speak again. You wanna get out of the ball pit now? Yeah. I can tell if he's upset or embarrassed at what just happened as we exit the ball pit and make the walk back to the desk. That's kinda why I don't use the cable. Funnily enough, I usually just leave it to Moon. Uh, really? Actually, I kinda get it now. Not to diss you or anything, but Moon seemed to know what he was doing, I think. Yep, he has had a lot more time to practice because of patrols. Plus being active whenever the kids are sleeping. So he doesn't just go free falling and end up tangled in cables? Well, no, but I could do it just as well. Uh, not doubting that. You just need more time. You want to try again then? I can keep a timer for you. Uh, I'll go for the second one. You want to try again then? I can keep a timer for you. No, well, wait. Why do you need a timer for? To keep track of how long you can go without getting tangled. No, I'm not doing that again. I can't help but laugh at Sun's embarrassment. Oh, while well, the poor guy just crosses his arms and pouts. Okay, okay, you don't have to do that. Just felt like messing me out, that's all. Huh. I playfully roll my eyes as I go pick up my phone. Glancing back at Sun, I pull up Vanessa's contact from my phone and hold it out for Sun to take. Yeah, wanna call Vanessa for me? Uh, I can work on the next generator in the meantime. Yes, please! Sun wastes no time grabbing the phone and calling Vanessa. And I leave him to it as I go to sort out the next mess of cables. Oh, Actually, I have enjoyed this mini game. It's pretty fun. Uh, let's see. First cable is down here. Okay, second cable. Wow. Okay, uh, second one's over here. Third one's over here, uh, and then number four is down here. Standing up straight, I stretch my arms over my head as I glance at Sun on the phone. He has the device in front of him, probably on speaker mode, and he seems concerned. Not that I was really paying attention to what he was doing just now. There, there's no need for that. I'm sure you'll see what I mean if you look at the cameras. Maybe not right now, but whenever you have the time. He's waving his other hand in front of him nervously, and his race have shrunk a little bit. What did Vanessa say to him? Sun glances over at me for a moment before Vanessa starts talking again, and he sets his attention back on the phone. If something really did happen, the staff bots would have let me know. But what if they don't? That should be possible. I believe it if it's just one bot, but there's no way that many of them would just stop working out of nowhere. Well, what if they didn't think the person was dangerous? Son, that's not possible. They're supposed to go off if they see anyone or something. That's not supposed to be in here. Look, I don't want to completely rule out what you're saying, but what you're telling me just doesn't add up. I'll ask Lyon about it later. I'll have to go check on the kid again. Before Son can respond, Vanessa hangs up. His arms drop in defeat as I make my way over to him, and he hands me back my phone. Uh, she didn't believe you. Are you okay? Sun forces a smile and waves his head in front of him nonchalantly. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just... Worried? Yeah, no kidding. She thought it was just... She thought it was this weird bug we had a while back that maybe was making me see things that weren't there. A bug? It's a long story. But she thought maybe I was hallucinating a rabbit we used to have here. But I told her the person was dressed like a rabbit. What? Yeah, I tried telling her it was real since... You were there, and there used to be a rabbit here. Yeah. I don't know much about him other than his name is Bonnie, and he was one of the glam rocks. Huh. Yeah, the others don't really like talk about it, so... I guess there's something else we could ask Vanessa about later. Maybe. Remembering what I'm supposed to be doing, I put my phone back in my pocket and go to the computer to shut off the lights for the third time. Halfway there. Glass at a little digital toll clock in a corner of the screen. I keep a mental note of the time. 3 a.m. I sigh. Not wasting any more time in turning the lights off. Watch as the rooms dim around me. And my only source of light are the screens and a little charging station in the wall. Hmm. Yawning, I step back from the computer. I know I have to hurry up and get this done, but now that my adrenaline is starting to wear off, I don't know if I can. I sigh and glance back at Moon, who is giving me a knowing look. Feeling tired again, Lion? Yeah, 
probably a mix of the adrenaline and sugar start to wear off, I think. Maybe I was hallucinating rabbit after all. I smiled slightly at my joke. Moon, however, seems less than amused, giving me a deadpan stare. I clear my throat, reading the room and taking my flashlight back out. I take my flashlight back out, making my way a few steps past the desk. However, when I look back at Moon, I notice the cable lowering behind him. He points a finger at me as he starts hovering off the ground. Stay there. I'll be right back. With that, he leaves, the cable allowing him to maneuver over the barriers of the daycare and disappear. Shrugging and lowering my flashlight, I stay put. Unlike I was going anywhere anyway. Eventually decide to sit on the floor with my legs crossed and my chin resting on my palm. Since I have nothing better to do, I look around my surroundings. Several towers of stacked foam cans, the sparkly floor, the large cutouts of the glam rock animatronics that decorate the place. For a place that's full of kids during the day, it's weirdly organized. Probably because of sun. He did say that he never left his place, and I can imagine keeping it looking nice is a big reason why. I can't help but feel a little kind of bad though. Sun and Moon's entire lives are in the stay here. I know they have each other, but I can't imagine spending all my time in such a small area. My train of thought is cut off when a pair of red eyes peer at me just beyond the barrier. I sigh, pushing myself back up. There you are, Moon. Are we gonna- A loud ringing hits my ears and I jump, dropping my flashlight. W what Covering one of my ears with one hand, I try to pick it back up. And a familiar red haze overlays my vision. With it now back in my hands, I point it in the direction of the eyes. However, they disappear as quickly as they came, and the noise in my ears fades into nothing, with a subtle ambience within the daycare. My arms drop to the sides. I hear the familiar sound of gears and robotics. When I look up, Moon is already re-entering the daycare. I'm not even sure if what I saw was real, or my mind playing tricks on me due to stress. Either way, I try taking deep breaths to calm down my rapidly beating heart as Moon approaches me. The cable's unhooking from his back, retreating back, back up. I want to do a quick check around the daycare, just to keep an eye on things. Also, I brought you this. He gives me an open can of Fizzy Fast, and although reluctantly, I take it. So, nothing out of the ordinary? So far? Oh, that's good. He stares at me for a moment as I take a long sip of the soda. Somehow it tastes even sweeter than normal. It's something happened while I was away. Huh? Your heart's racing. I'll tell him the truth. Well... Moon's expression softens as he waits for me to answer. I was over there, um, waiting for you to come back. And over there... I point to where I saw them, just past the barrier. I saw these red eyes. Thought it was you at first, but then I started hearing this loud noise. Moon's eyes widened slightly. It was the same thing I heard when that rabbit lady attacked me, so... Moon looks to where I'm pointing and takes a few steps towards it. Did it look like she was trying to get in? I don't know. She was just there. Right before you showed up, she just, well, vanished. I could hear Moon's internal fans getting louder. Hopefully that means she can't get in here. Yeah, that would be nice. The fact that she knows you're here isn't good, though. You don't say. I take another long drink of the soda, using my other hand to point my flashlight towards the structures. Shall we now? Moon tilts his head at me. Shouldn't you give it a minute? Why? I don't think trying to work at this level of stress is a good thing. I'll be fine. Managed to pass 12 hours on like 10 minutes of sleep. I'll live. Moon gives me a bewildered look, sighing in annoyance. Okay, we can check this one generator. Then you're taking a break. Uh, sure. I begrudgingly give in, for now. A moon nods his head at structures, motioning for me to follow him as he leads to the next generator. I set the soda can on the ground by the structures before I follow Moon in. He plops down next to the generator, looking over at me. Go on. I nod, putting my flashlight down so I can test the generator. The machine's LEDs turn green as the mechanism comes roaring to life. Good. No problems. I do notice that my hand holding the switch is shaky a bit, though. More than normal. Something wrong? What? You're just staring at it. Oh! I switch the generator back off and I pick up my flashlight before making my way back out of the structure. After picking up the soda can I left on the ground, I wait a moment for Moon to follow, lightly tapping my foot on the ground. Moon stands back up, albeit still slouching, and gives me a concerned look. Are you sure you're alright? Yeah? Why? Moon points at my hand, holding the flashlight. I didn't realize it, but I'm gripping the thing way tighter than I thought. 
I loosened my hold on it as I saw walking back to the desk. See? Do you see why I told you to take a break now? I rolled my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Moon stays silent, leaning back against the desk as I put down the soda and turn the lights on. I mark my progress and turn the flashlight off, watching as Sun sits on the desk, lightly kicking his legs back and forth. So! Break time? I sigh. I can't. I have to finish this. Hey! You said you'd take a break after that one! Sorry, but I can't keep dragging this out. Come on, lion, please! I make my way to the cables on the floor, being extra careful as I go to sit down since my hands are still shaking. A lot. Oh! Okay, da. Uh, six of them. Great. Uh, I see the fur. Oh, wait. Nope. It's still going, da. Uh, man, these ones are getting more cop. Lion, no! What the? Sun suddenly grabs my wrist and practically drags me away from the wall. You're shaking! It's not safe to do that now. Technically, it's not wrong. No, oh, I'm practically vibrating. You sure that was the soda and non energy drink that Moon gave me? I notice Sun's rays are shrinking a bit, and he's avoiding eye contact. Sun? Sun, what did you do? Okay, maybe I put some sun drops in the drink? I thought it would help! He says it so fast that his words start blending together, but I can still understand him. Seriously? I'm sorry! Sun lets go of my wrist, staring at the ground like a kicked puppy. Uh-huh. I try to go back to the cables, only for Sun to drag me over to my desk again! Son, really? I know I messed up, but messing with the cables and machines with shaky hands isn't safe. Ah, uh, I'll be fine. Go along. Oh, go along with it. I sigh. You really think so? Son stares at me for a second before nodding. I raised an eyebrow at him, but I decided to stop resisting. All right, fine. Son doesn't say anything for a moment before suddenly picking me up. What? One second. I notice the cables lowering. Good lord, not again! Son, no! I'll be careful this time. The cables lift us off the ground. Much more slowly this time. Okay, he isn't messing around this time. Since he's not rushing this time, the ride isn't nearly as reckless. We're only in the air for a few moments before Son steps onto a small balcony that leads into his room. Okay, why are we here? Just a precaution, that's all. Sure. Take a good look at a room behind us. It feels oddly... Lonely compared to the daycare. There's a small staircase leading up to the space, which is only faintly illuminated by the bright fluorescent lights behind us. There are some fairy lights strung to the wall, but several of the bulbs are broken or dim. The floor is wooden and it looks like it hasn't been swept in ages, and there's various random objects strewn around the floor. Plushy, stools, foam shapes, and other things. In the corner next to a small stair is a broken staff bot, its body mangled and its head ripped off. I hear his son give a nervous chuckle, clearly noticing me staring at his, well, less than colorful living space. Eh, uh, welcome to my room? Uh, why is it messy? Why it's so dreary? Uh, that, ah, uh, what, I, why is it so dreary? Huh. For someone so happy, this place feels sad. I don't mean that as an insult or anything, just the vibe I'm getting. Nah, I get that. Normally we don't get visitors, and we're so busy that we never really considered it. Huh. Well? Sun goes there and plops down onto a single beanbag chair in the corner of the room. What whatever you want to do up here, feel free! Okay, then I point at Sun! I point at Sun and Moon! Okay, th th can I do that? Can I do that? <laughs> oh my god, I look around a bit, seeing if anything in particular catches my eye. One corner is covered in various drawings. Most likely from the kids, Sun and Moon look after on a daily basis. There's also a few messy ragdolls and other things that made to look like them, placed neatly on a small table. In another corner, what appears to be a hole in the wall leads into another room. Eyes land on Sun again. The damaged staff bot rests in his lap as he tries to reattach its head. He doesn't even seem to notice me watching at all. Seeing how careful he's being with it makes me wonder how the bot got up here in the first place. But maybe I should leave the questions for later. Uh, ask about the drawings, investigate a small room, ask about the drawings. What's this? I point to the corner filled with drawings. Sun beams when he looks at it. Those are all gifts from the kids! Mooney and I have been keeping each and every one of them. Sun's head tilts, 
His fingers slightly tap at the hardwood floor as he goes on about all the drawings and things the kids made specifically for him and Moon. Got any favorites? My eyes directed towards a little felt plushie of sun. The fact that it's handmade is evident, with buttons for eyes and dried white glue all over the seams. I can't pick a favorite. I love all of them! I stifle a laugh. That's sweet. Sun laughs nervously, but before he can say anything. The fairy lights give a brief flicker before dying out. Oh, come on! I just watch as they transform into Moon, who seems surprised. Ugh, those cheap lights are probably burnt out. Ugh, can't say I'm surprised. Don't tell anyone I said this, but the people in charge of this place aren't known to splurge. I'm not arguing with you. That'll give them some credit, though. If it weren't for them being stingy, I might not even be here right now. What? Remember that bug we've been mentioning? I nod. Moon leans back in the chair a bit, facing the ceiling. If you want, I can tell you some things. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. It would definitely explain some things. Like how Moon got the red eyes and why the generators are in the play structures. I nod before dragging a small cushion a bit closer to where Moon is and sit down. Ugh. Where do I start? Well... Uh, is that why they closed the daycare? How did you deal... How did you deal with it? How exactly did you two deal with that bug? I'd say Sun was the one left to deal with it. The lights in here were kept on at all times, meaning Sunny was always active. And as for me, I wasn't in full control of myself. So the bug mainly affected you? Technically. However, I would be lying if I said it didn't affect Sun at all. Meanwhile, the staff was using the generators to deal with me. Sun was left on his own for a while. I won't go into detail, but I can't imagine what that felt like for him. Sun would go weeks without seeing anyone, while still having to deal with. He sighs, arms spreading out onto the floor as he stares at the ceiling. I should have fought against that bug harder than I did. Well, that certainly clears some things up. Did, did, did it? Did, I, I don't think that explains anything. Like, if, if you're telling me that Sun was left to deal with dot dot dot, I'm going to assume that Sun was left to deal with Gregory. I, I don't know what Gregory was doing with Sun, but that boy is a goddamn menace. I, I will I will say that. But it still doesn't answer anything. I have no idea what exactly the bug did to Moon, but from what I can tell, it sounds pretty bad. That and how the bug came about in the first place is still a mystery to me. Maybe now is it a time to ask. You weren't in control, that's concerning. You weren't in control. Well, you weren't in control of yourself, right? No, I wasn't, but... Stop being so hard on yourself. I'd say you're more than making up for it now, and I think Sun agrees with me. Yeah, he does. Exactly. A smile creeps onto Moon's face as he sits up. Do, do you have to look at me with those eyes? Do you have to give me bedroom eyes right now, Moon? If only the rest of the staff were just as nice. How are you feeling, though? What? Is all the extra sugar starting to wear off? I completely forgot about that. Even though that's why we're up here in the first place. Yeah, I've stopped shaking, which is definitely a good sign. Yeah, I think so. Alright then. Moon gets up and walks to the balcony as the cable lowers to its level. Wait to continue? Yeah, yeah, one sec. Checking my phone for the time and any new notifications, I push myself up off the floor, one hand on the curtain covered wall for support. However, I feel something stick to my palm when I pull my hand away. Peeling it off with my other hand, I realize it's a piece of paper that's slightly been taped to the wall. What catches my eyes, though, is one word written in bold black letters. Missing. I don't get a good look at the poster before Moon's voice steps me out of it. Lion? Yeah, yeah. I quickly cover up the poster with the curtains before speedwalking to Moon. The light from daycare shining onto the balcony causes Moon to transform back into Sun, who waves at me. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Wasting no time, Sun picks me up and brings me back down to the desk. My mind wanders back to the poster. The only other detail I got from that was that the victim is seven years old. Just a kid. So, what do you think? Huh? Of what Moon told you about the bug. Oh. It must have been hard for you both. I think it must have been really hard for you too. Since Moon was in control of himself and you were basically isolated in here for what? Weeks? Sun sighs as he would walk to the desk, unhooking the cable from his back. I don't really think about it, but yeah. 
does make me appreciate how things are, though. It also makes me appreciate having Mooney around, too. Not having him around for a long time was... It wasn't fun. I shrug. Hey, I'd say you two at least learned something from it. Not that I completely cancel it out, but, you know. Sun nods, smiling brightly as usual. I sigh, glancing at the remaining cables. I take my phone out of my pocket to check the time quickly. 5 a.m. Well, I'm officially pulling an all-nighter. Nothing I'm unfamiliar with. Oh, no, not this again! Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, okay, that's one. All right, that fixes that. One, two. Okay, that's good. Okay, two. Now, three. Okay, now four. Four. God damn it. Why is it so messy? Uh, five is right. Wait, is it here? Yeah, yeah, this. Okay, and finally, six. I stay seated on the floor for a minute, stretching my arms above my head as I lay down the cold heart tile. Sleeping in that chair definitely didn't do my back any favors. I close my eyes for a minute to block out the fluorescent light pouring into my eyes. Not that it really helps. Hints of orange and yellow manage to break through. I stay like that for a minute until something blocks out the light. Opening them, I see Sun standing over me, hand on his knees. Are you okay, Lion? I toss an arm over my eyes. Yeah, all good. Need a hand? I hear his footsteps as he moves around me. A good enough sign to pick out from under my arms as any. Sun's giving me his outstretched hand. I'll take his hand. Breathing out his laugh, I set my arms beside me and use my other to grab his. He smiles brightly as he pulls me up, putting his other hand on my shoulder for balance. Thanks. No problem! Uh, Sun gives me a pat on the shoulder before I start to walk back to the desk. I'm about to follow him, but I stop when I notice something. A few handprints on his back. A lot of bits of what I'm assuming is paint and markering. Sun? Yeah? It's a paint on your back. Oh! Sun laughs bashfully, waving his hand. That's, that's nothing. You know how kids are. <laughs> well, yeah, I uh, figured. Does that mean the maintenance staff um, help you with that at least? All he does is fidget with his hands, eyes towards the computer. Well, that answers it. Uh, I'll ask why. Eyebrows furrowed. I follow Sun back to the desk. The staff really can't be bothered, huh? Huh? I lean over the desk. Resting both arms on it as I look up at him. I don't know. The way you've talked about the staff here. Do they really care that little about you and Moon? Sun shrugs. Try to keep the moon up. Well, we're not for everyone. Some don't mind us. Others do, but we try. Uh-huh. So you're sure it's fine? Sun nods. The bells on his wrist emitting a soft chime as he gives me a double thumbs up. Uh-huh. Uh. -huh. uh. You think whoever's at parts of services will be more on top of things? Well, I'm sure they're busy. There's no need to bother them. Every part of Sun's body is giving off different signals. His hands waved everything off. His rays shrink back, and the smile is forcing its way back onto his face. Something wrong? No! I blink. Sun clearly knows that I'm not convinced. Chess! They're busy enough as is. I wouldn't want them worrying about us. Is this about the bug? Sun stared at the floor, one hand fidgeting with the ribbons around his wrist. He nods. You want to talk about it? If not, it's... Oh no, Mooney is already letting you on it. It's only fair that I tell you some things too, right? If you insist. Well, while the daycare was closed, we weren't really seeing anyone. And of course, the staff didn't stick around long enough when they had to come in here. They mainly stopped by to install the generators and make sure they were working to keep Moon away. I heard some of them talking. One of them asked if they really needed to keep both of us around after... Oh. So that's why he doesn't like parts and services. He's still worried that they're going to get rid of Moon. Everything's fine now. I, I know that. I just... I still can't help but worry, though. I don't know if I can handle being completely alone here. Moon did mention Sun being isolated for a while. But if the staff did all that just to keep Moon at bay... Huh. Try lifting the moon, uh, ask what moon did. I'll ask what moon did. If you don't mind me asking, what exactly did moon do? Sun looks at me, silent. Just curious, since apparently the staff had to go to those legs just to keep him out. Can't help but wonder, you know. 
Sun lightly hugs himself as he looks towards the computer. Maybe it would be better if Moon answered that. I follow his gaze, the computer screen sitting idly, waiting for me to issue the usual command. I guess. Maybe I should try steering this conversation back on track. How do you feel about things here now? I fidget with the scroll button on the computer mouse. Glad you had time, we're already almost halfway through the hour. Didn't think my shift would include this much talking. At least that makes this job much more interesting than sorting cables in silence. I can definitely say I like how things are. Feels nice knowing everything is mostly back to normal. That's good at least. Sun suddenly grabs my shoulders and forces me to face the computer. Keep going then! I don't want to keep you from your responsibilities for too long. Fair enough. I look back at the time and sigh as Sun sits on the desk again. Oh, for God's sake, I would have inhaled a whole bottle of melatonin if I knew I'd be up this late. Sun seems to do a double take, pointing at me like he wants to say something before backing off. What? Language! I raise an eyebrow, crackling a slight smile at his antics. Sun, I'm an adult and there's no one around. I know, I know, it's just force of habit. I snicker at that. Even when he's not working, he has a filter. Uh, try to make Sun cuss, that's cute. I'm going to make Sun cuss! Sun, say a curse word. Right now. He looks at me like I just told him to kill a man. What? Said say the F word. I, I can't. Yeah, you can. There's no one around but me. I lightly elbow him in the torso. I won't tell. No. Say, say hell at least. What? You're going to say H-E double hockey sticks? <laughs> no, not the mad path. No. Say it. Sun lightly pushes me towards the computer. How about we talk about this later? Good? Good. Please, let's drop this topic and eventually forget you. Ask me such a question and we never speak of it again. <laughs> I finally decide to drop the joke, prying one of his hands on my shoulder. All right, all right. You can chill out now. I didn't expect you to do it anyway. What? Then why didn't you ask me to do that in the first place? I shrug. Thought it would be funny. Sun suddenly puts... Uh, both hands on either side of my head before gently making me turn to face the computer before letting go. I roll my eyes once, cracking a smile at his antics. All right, all right, I'll see you in a bit. The usual. Lights out, moons out, sitting cross-legged on a desk. Uh, we just gonna silently sit here crisscross applesauce? So about the filter. Yeah, I can say frick. What about it? I blink. Not expected. <laughs> that TH2 I was so freaking. Oh my god, it was so freaking casual as well. What the heck? And I know that I can't say the word because YouTube's gonna be. YouTube's just gonna demonetize a whole video for one F bomb. Or at least not expecting him to do that so soon. <laughs> Nothing. I step away from the desk, feeling a headache coming out when I start walking towards the play structures. Thankfully, it feels like no a normal, I only slept for 10 minutes headache and not the weird rabbit lady is about to kill me headache. Never did I think I'd be happy for my headaches to be from a lack of sleep, as if this night couldn't get any weirder. Moon hops off the desk and catches up with me. Honestly, I think I deserve a worker's cop for this. Because I'm definitely not being paid enough to barely survive nearly being murdered by a woman in a rabbit onesie. <laughs> Don't joke like that. Right. Moving on. That aside, you'd be lucky if they believed you. Moon makes a gesture asking me to follow him, and I tag along as he guides me towards the fourth generator. Now that's your fault. They're just not what you call urgent. Now again, don't tell anyone I said that. I'm not trying to get scrapped anytime soon. Yeah, good plan. I can faintly see the red light of the next generator behind the frame of the center structure. Just one more after this and I'm home free. One more and I get to leave. I'll leave not knowing when or if I'll see these two ever again. Might as well get any questions out of the way now. Hey, random question, huh? Uh, what, the, what did the bug made him do? What, where did the bug come from? What did it do? Stop put these generators to deal with you, right? Moon says nothing for a bit. Doesn't even look at me as we make our way up the structure. Yeah. 
really hoping this doesn't like upset him. What happened exactly? Like, what did you even do? Silence. Moon stops. I also stop, remaining just a few feet away. I wait for him to say something. Anything. Moon? Nothing. He keeps his back turned to me. It's better if I don't say. What? Moon, it couldn't have been that bad. If it was, I can't find a response for that. But if it really is as bad as he says. No, there's no way. I mean, you did say you had no control when. Drop it, lion. I'd rather not talk about it. Not now. Can I at least ask why? I don't like talking about it. I keep quiet as Moon continues guiding me. My mind wanders back to the posters I saw in this room. I'm hoping that I'm just overthinking this and the posters are just there. The, and the posters being there is just an unfortunate coincidence. However, my thoughts are cut off when Moon suddenly turns and sits right next to the generator. Your turn, Lion. I nod, shuffling over and flipping the switch, listening to whatever motors and mechanisms are inside power on as the LED lights flicker to green. Four down, one to go. I turn off the generator as Moon makes a head start backing out, and I scramble to follow him. Moon stands up straight, letting out what sounds like a sigh as he stretches his arms above his head. For a moment, I'm reminded of how tall he and Sun actually are, just as he goes right back to his usual slouch stance. Moon notices me looking and tilts his head slightly. What? Compliment his height, why- Ask why he's that tall! I'll compliment his height. Christ, you're tall. Moon looks at me, confused. Like, if I just asked if the sky is orange. That's it? Oh, yeah, I didn't really think about it until now, but my god. God, you're built like a whole giraffe. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> how is that a compliment? Moon snickers at my comment, leaning back against the structure behind us. Should I take that as a compliment? Uh, flirt? I can flirt with Moon! Moon crosses his arms, looking down at me while he waits for my response. Lion? Oh. Oh no. Jesus Christ, why does he look at me like that? Why are you looking at me like that? This is very awkward for me. No, yeah, yep. I give him an awkward thumbs up as if I didn't just forget how the English language works. Moon shakes his head as he starts walking back to the desk. Cute. Jesus Christ. Am I really flirting with a robot right now? Maybe it's about time we do some serious introspection. I think we're all gonna need some serious introspection. <laughs> or I pretend that's entirely normal in hopes that it happens again. My god, Lion, no! Focus! I quickly stab myself out of whatever I was just experiencing. Of course, I follow him back, stopping at a computer. Last one, Lion. I know. Last one. It feels kind of weird knowing it's almost over. Earlier, it felt like I was making no progress, and now I'm about to... I'm about ready to leave for the night. Glad he had a clock. It reads, 6 a.m. With my hand on the mouse, I stare at the screen with the option to turn the lights back on. Maybe it's just paranoia over something bad happening when I step out the door, but part of me doesn't want to leave yet. Even though I already know I can't stay forever. I guess Moon caught me staring into space, though, as he waves a hand in front of my face. Bye, and I blink, snap it back to reality. Huh? It looks like you were spacing out. Well, you'd be right about that. We sat in silence for a minute before Moon speaks again. Lion? Yeah? You think we'll see each other again after this? I don't know what I can say to that. I don't make those decisions, but considering how kind Sun and Moon have been to me, it would be nice to see them more often. Actually, thinking about it makes me remember something else. Well, I don't make these choices here, but I know that the Glamrocks all have their designated mechanics. I just barely noticed Moon's expression brightened slightly. Maybe if I get some more time here, I could ask about that. If it helps, Sunny and I could put a good word for you. That would definitely help. Thanks. I look back at the screen, feeling a bit of new motivation. Ready? Moon nods, and I turn the lights back on, wasting no time going to the last few cables that need sorting. Oh, how am I doing this in the dark? Okay, one. Okay, that's one. That's two. This seems oddly short. Uh, there, there's a lot more cables, but at the same time, it's not as uh, 
th it's not as many cables as before. I mean, no, it's not as long. It's not as long as like the previous ones were. Okay, six, uh, seven, and eight. Before I can even move, Sun picks me up and places me on my two feet himself. Looking up, I can see him smiling down at me, his hands on my shoulders. Hey, Sun. Hello! So what do you think of my little desi designated mechanic idea? Yeah, it's a great idea, but until then, please, stop by whenever you can, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Sun's expression brightens, his rays retracting, expanding in what I think is safe to describe as joy. We both stand in silence for a moment, and I glance back at a computer. All I have left, all I have left is to turn the light off, test the last generator, and then I'm home free. I think Sun notices my gaze as he lets go of my shoulders and lightly nudges me to the computer. Go on! I'm sure you want to go home, right? I shrug. It'll be nice to go pass out for the next few hours. What about you, though? I won't be leaving anytime soon. I still have plenty to do. I still have plenty to do to prepare for tomorrow when we reopen. That makes sense. I decide to quit stalling and turn off the lights for the last time. Sun standing behind me as I do so. As usual, the daycare is cloaked in a droning ambience, and I can clearly hear the attendance mechanisms behind me. A sun transforms into moon again. You ready? Moon nods, already walking ahead. Small question. Huh? Would you mind if we walked you out of here? Just in case that person is still around somewhere. As I follow him, I get flashbacks to just a few hours ago. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. It's the least we can do. The last generator is at ground level, so it doesn't take long for us to find it. I still have to tell Vanessa about the whole thing later, too. That's true. Whenever I come back here, I'll keep you and Sun updated. Scooting over to the generator, I flip the switch. To my absolute surprise, it works! I have to switch it off, Moon and I exit the structure in silence. So, this is it, huh? Moon nods as he walks back to the desk. I follow. I look at a computer screen before I glance it back at Moon. I'll hug him goodbye. Ignoring the computer for now, I wrap my arms around Moon's torso in a tight hug. He freezes for a moment, most likely not expecting it. He eventually hugs me back though. Gently placing his hand on my back. If we stay like that for a minute, I'm practically leaning on him, and I feel his hands lightly gripping the back of my shirt. I do let go eventually, though, smiling up at Moon as I'm about to turn the lights back on. Moon smiles back, his arms crossed. My hand on the computer mouse, I glance back at Moon for the last time tonight. See ya, Moon. Moon smiles slightly, his head tilted a bit. Goodbye, Lion. The daycare is lit up again as I watch as Moon transform into sun. Not a word leaves his mouth. So, ready to head out? He shrugs, fidgety with his hands. I guess this will be my first time out of daycare, which is exciting! Yep. I go pick up my stuff and make sure I'm not forgetting anything as I walk to the door next to the desk. Sun goes ahead and moves some of the makeshift barricade away. I gesture for him to follow me before I push the button on the wall, taking a few steps back while the door opens. As we're making our way to a nearby staff-only room, I glance back at Sun, who seems almost mesmerized at our surroundings. I don't blame him. He's never been able to see the rest of the pizza plaques through his own eyes until now. The staff-only room is pretty mundane, but Sun is lighting up at every detail. See, he seems to snap out of it once we reach the exit, though. His eyes are back on the door, and he's back to fidgeting with his hands. Last hug. Dropping my stuff to the floor, I charge at Sun with a hug. Make him stumble back a bit. He almost seems stunned for a moment before picking me up and squeezing me back, laughing. I lightly kick my feet back and forth in the air, just savoring the moment before I have to leave. Sun steps ahead of me to hold the door open, the nearly empty parking lot waiting outside. Thanks, son. No problem. I have to take a few steps outside. I look back at him, waving my free hand. He waves back, energetic as ever. Bye, lion! Bye! continue my walk to my car, hearing the door close behind me and the faint sound of bells slowly fading away. I get to my car without any problems, placing my belongings on the passenger seat before I start the engine, and can feel a small headache coming on as I back out my spot. I'm sure it's nothing some sleep won't fix. As I'm leaving though, I notice something in my rearview mirror. Or at least I think I do. When I look, there's nothing unusual. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Besides, I want to go home before I pass out behind the wheel, so I keep my eyes on the road, leaving the piece of plaques behind me for the night.
That could not have been the ending. That's definitely not the only ending there is. So apparently, I almost did everything right up to the fifth hour, okay? Up to like 5 a.m. So like right here, instead of like asking what Moon did when he was glitching out, we were supposed to try to lift the mood. Huh. Well, you clearly didn't like the idea of being separated like that. Sun nods. Hey, imagine if instead, Moon just had his own body. What? You know, you both could get your own bodies and... You don't do the thing where you switch when the lights are turned off and on, you know? I shrug, and Sun seems to be deep in thought. I... If that happened... I could hear the gears turning. Literally. Oh my gosh! I can finally hug him! Oh, that's so cute! I jump slightly, not expecting Sun to shout like that. Well, someone has his priorities set. But yeah, that's food for thought. We can't eat, though. Really? Yeah, why would we? Just, I heard stories about what the glam rocks eating trash. I thought maybe. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. To be fair, that would explain why their mouth doesn't open. Maybe I should try steering this conversation back on track. So, how do you feel about how things are now? I fit you with the scroll button on the computer mouse. We're gonna skip ahead to the next um, choice. So, right here, I tried to make Sun cuss. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to say. That's cute. That's kind of cute, not gonna lie. Sun says nothing for a moment, his rays spinning as he sits cr cross legged on the desk. What? I shrug, checking my phone for notifications. Just the fact that you don't cuss at all. You definitely could. It's not like you get into trouble for it. But you just, well, don't. Well, uh, I have to. I'd rather that than even risking something bad in front of the kids out of habit. How about Moon? Uh, does he have a 24-hour filter? Yeah, about that. I think the bug affected his filters a bit, so... <laughs> so you're telling me that Moon just cusses like a sailor? It's not funny! It kinda is. Sun suddenly puts uh, both hands on either side of his, off my head, uh, before gently making me turn to face the computer before letting go. I roll my eyes, once cracking a smile at his antics. All right, all right, I'll see you in a bit, and I'll see you in a bit too. So I don't think this choice really affects uh, affection whatsoever. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, you're supposed to like raise their affection all the way up to max for the secret ending, okay? I forgot to mention that, but uh, I do want to see what happens if you ask like where the bug came from. If you don't mind me asking about the bug again, well, any idea where it came from in the first place? Bugs don't just spawn out of nowhere unless someone messes with your programming or something. Moon doesn't say anything for a bit as he guides me through the structure. Can't say for sure, but it was definitely some kind of tampering. You think it was malicious or some kind of oversight? Well, it seemed very intentional, so I doubt it was just a mistake in my code. But at least we shouldn't have to worry about it anymore. I STILL BLAME GREGORY! We shouldn't? That's good. My mind wanders back to the poster I saw in this room. I'm hoping I'm just overthinking this, and the poster being there is just an unfortunate coincidence. However, my thoughts are cut off when Moon suddenly turns and sits right next to the generator. Your turn, Lion. I nod, shuffling over and flipping the switch, listening to whatever motors and mechanisms are inside. Power on as the LED lights flick to green. I'm pretty sure this might still be the same, I'm not sure. As usual, the daycare is cloaked in a droning ambience, and I can hear the attendance mechanisms behind me as Sun transforms into Moon again. You ready? Moon nods, already walking ahead. Small question. Huh? Would you mind if we walked you out of here? Just in case that person is still around somewhere. As I follow him, I get flashbacks to just a few hours ago. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. It's the least we could do. The last generator is at ground level, so it doesn't take long for us to find it. I still have to tell Vanessa about the whole thing later, too. That's true. Whenever I come back here, I'll keep you and Sun updated. Scooting over to the generator, I flip the switch to my absolute surprise. It works! After switching it off, Moon and I exit in silence. So this is it, huh? Moon nods as he walks back to the desk. I follow. I look at a computer screen before glancing back at Moon. I'll be seeing you then? Hopefully. Hey, even if I'm not gonna be working here anytime soon, I can always just visit as a guest, you know? <laughs> I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Right as I'm about to turn the lights on, Moon hugs me from behind, arms wrapped around my shoulders. 
I don't necessarily mind though, and I place my free hand on one of his arms as I turn the lights on. The daycare is lit up again, and I watch as Moon transforms into Sun. It doesn't say anything for a minute before backing out to hug. So, ready to head out? I guess. This will be my first time out of daycare, which is exciting! Yeah? Uh, I pick up my stuff, do one last check, and head for the door. Sun goes ahead, probably to move some to make shift barricade out of the way. His alarm stops him in his tracks. We exchange worried looks. Sun runs up to me, picking me up while the cables lower and hooks onto his back. Wasting no time, he brings me up to his and Moon's shared room. Almost messing up the landing before placing me on the ground and hopefully out of harm's way. Stay here. We'll be back. Yeah, I can't get another word in before Sun leaves. The nighttime sequence active in the rest of the pizza plex as I watch him transform back into Moon from a distance. Noticing the one door that leads out of the room, I block it with the beanbag chair and a few other things just in case. However, as I'm doing that, I remember the hole in the wall I spotted earlier. Also, I forgot to mention, uh, instead of asking about the paintings and seeing like the missing uh, child's poster, I decided to investigate the room and I did find the Balloon Boy uh, arcade, which was a pretty neat easter egg. I, j just letting y'all know. The hiding place. Forcing myself through the small gap, I drop to the floor on the other side like a sack of potatoes. With a face full of dust, I push myself back up. I use all the boxes I can to cover up the hole and stop any light from leaking. All I can do is wait now, trying to calm myself down until sun or moon returns. The occasional sound effects from the arcade machine in the corner catch my attention. A potential distraction? The game isn't too loud, but I'm still wary about it potentially giving me away. Until I remember the electrical tape I also brought with me. I decide to cover up the speakers with it and at least give the game a try now that I actually have my wallet with me. After brushing the dust and dirt off my clothes, I insert a quarter into the machine before the game starts for what it most likely the first time in a decade or so. The game itself isn't bad. It reminds me of Flappy Bird, but way more forgiving. The little sun and moon in the corner of the screen certainly helps to lift the mood a bit. I'm able to make some progress as I keep my surroundings in mind, making sure I listen for anything suspicious. Nothing of the sort happens, so I continue with the game. Maybe some random burglar decided to try their luck or something. Wouldn't be the hardest thing to- Wouldn't be the weirdest thing to happen by a long shot. I smile slightly at the mental image of a pearly masked burglar coming face to face with Moon and freaking out. However, my train of thought is cut off when I notice something. Out of order. A weird purple box towards the bottom of the screen. Wondering if it's some kind of glitched item, I let Balloon Boy fall towards the bottom of the screen to try to pick it up. However, what I'm met with is Balloon Boy facing through the obstacles as the visuals are coated in a fiery orange color, the sun in the corner taking a weird, dark appearance. The screen freezes on this visual change as distorted music continues to play. Pressing the buttons and moving the joystick does nothing. Oh god, I broke it! Is this what I get for touching a glitchy box in a game that hasn't been touched since the Stone Ages? Probably. Groaning an annoyance, I step away from the machine, debating... Or uh, whether I should take a nap on the dusty, unclean floor until either sun and moon come back, or morning comes and Vanessa lectures me again. Wait! Don't leave yet! I jump a whole two feet in the air, placing a hand over my rapidly beating heart, as I back further away from the machine, still stuck on the broken visual. There's nothing to be s scared of, I assure you. Is the game talking to me? Still shocked? Ah, I suppose that's fair. The hell are you? Give me just a moment. As if this couldn't get any weirder, a hand starts reaching out from the game, appearing glitchy and broken like the game itself. Panicked, I grab the nearest item, a Chica plush, and chuck it at the screen. The plushie phases through the hand, but it dissipates anyway. Actually, now that I think about it, the hand looks a lot like Sun and Moon's, except it's dark brown and red color. What? Alright, that was just rude. Answer the question! The voice sighs, and I see something pop up on the screen. A familiar looking celestial robot, coated in dark warm colors and sprouting four arms with bells and ribbons tied to the wrist. See? Its face looks very familiar to the messed up sun visual. Even if I were to scratch and claw and search, there are no words for me to find. Although, I am considering crawling back through the hole and pretending I never saw this. Come on now, lion. Am I really that frightening? The heck? How? Heard Moon mention it earlier. Am I talking to a sentient glitch right now? I thought nothing could top nearly being killed by a rope by a rabbit with a knife. Oh, how wrong I was. You may call me Eclipse.
Oh, oh, creative. You're not gonna possess me or something, are you? Not unless you ask. Besides, you're too far. Okay, thanks for the advice. Have a nice life! I pick up my stuff, about to turn in and head out before this gets any weirder. Wait, allow me one more question, please. Hell no, I'm not buying whatever you're trying to sell me. Look, line, at least let me speak. If you really wish to opt out, you can leave this room and forget you ever saw me. All I ask is for a bit of help. With what? Well, Eclipse starts to stick out one of his four arms out of the screen. However, it only lasts a few seconds before dissipating, separating into glitch-like particles and fading away. As you can see, I'm bound to this machine. Without a physical body to move around with, I'm essentially trapped in this room until the higher-ups inevitably decide to bulldoze it and replace it with a warehouse. All I ask is help finding another body so I can finally leave this accursed room. As long as I can move around, I don't care what it is. However, I do have some preferences, such as... Is it not obvious? With all four arms, Eclipse gestures to himself. If possible, I'd like to coexist with your... New friend. Sun and Moon? Yes. They already managed to share a body with one another. I'd like to think there's room for one more. Would you help me with that, lion? Uh, uh can I, I'm going to save, uh, I can try. I will certainly try. Is this a good idea? I'm not sure myself, but even if it doesn't work out, I can just walk away from it. It's not like Eclipse can really stop me. I can try. I don't know. I could ask them about it, but that's it. I prefer it if you brought them here, honestly. I believe I'd be more convincing face to face. Something about the sentence feels ominous. Look, I don't know. I already have to leave soon, and I don't know when I'll be back. It makes, if it makes things easier, you could just bring me to them. Who knows? Maybe if you start getting to know me at that time, Sun and Moon may not even be needed. I certainly wouldn't mind sharing a physical form if- I'M GONNA HAVE ECLIPSE INSIDE OF ME! Oh lord! <laughs> okay, 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 slow down! I already have at least two animatronics inside of me! Well, it's two and one, but still. Just a suggestion. In the end, the choice is truly yours. So I recommend you use it wisely, Lion. Uh... BRING ECLIPSE TO THEM YOURSELF?! I'M GOING TO DO THAT! I sigh, mentally beating myself up for this decision. Is this probably the dumbest decision I could make? Most likely! Does it at least sound kind of interesting? I'd be lying if I said no! Mentally preparing myself, I walk back to the arcade machine, standing directly in front of it. <sighs> Come on, let's get this over with. Eclipse's grin widens, almost to a sinister degree. Ah, how kind of you. Eclipse's face suddenly phases through the screen, and I stumble back, tripping on air due to shock and falling back. Eclipse wastes no time, pulling itself out of the machine with all four arms, smiling down at me. You seem to find me so intimidating, yet you still won't run. How priceless. I do believe we'll enjoy our time to get a lion. Hit an ending! So what happens if I try to bring sun and moon? I weigh my options, deciding it would be best to ask them myself. After all, it'll affect them the most. If they refuse, which is very likely and also very fair, I have no reason to go back to this guy. Alright, I'll ask them, and whether they tag along or not, it, it's not up to me. Fair enough. I do appreciate the effort, though. He crosses his arms, making a shooing motion with one of his many hands. Run along now, lion. I'm sure you wouldn't want to make them worry. Should they come back and see you're not there? I shake my head, using my entire body to nudge the boxes away from the hole before climbing back through. Uh-huh. Good luck. Sure enough, I see Moon uh, looking around the larger, darker room just as I exit. The cable is still attached to his back. Lion! There you are! Hey! Let me worry for a bit. Sorry. Moon scans my face with a concerned look. Something happened while I was gone. Guess I made it obvious. Yeah, I guess. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah. So, Moon's expression softens slightly, as if he's waiting for my response. I was playing that arcade game back there. I pointed to the hole in the wall. It was this weird purple block thing, and when I touched it, the game bugged out. Well, I heard this weird voice start talking to me from the game, and... 
What? Moon's expression is hard to read. It reminds me of when he just barely managed to rescue me from certain death. Is that bad? Moon stays silent for a bit before gently nudging me away from the small room and towards the balcony. It's probably best if I save that for another day. Why? It's a lot to unpack. I think we've both had our share of weirdness for now. Yeah, no kidding. Moon holds out his arms as he stands by the ledge. Now, how about we get you out of here? Wouldn't want you to put off any sleep any longer and dozy out behind the wheel. Right, right. I go to Moon, and he picks me up before bringing me out of daycare without any problems, transforming into sun as we leave the cast shadow in their room. I can't help but look back towards it, though. Maybe it's paranoia, but something tells me Eclipse wouldn't let go of this so easily. All I can do is hope I didn't just rope Sun and Moon into something really bad. The end? Okay, so for this last ending, you basically have to go out of your way not to get any affection points with either Sun or Moon. Like, I I don't really want to go through, like, showing you all those different interactions since most of them are more or less the same or you just being, like, absolutely quiet. You don't really get a lot of hints as to what their characters are like. But I did want to show you what happens if you ask why he's tall instead of complimenting his height. Why did they make you build, like, a beanpole? <laughs> What? You're what? Eight feet tall? I try measuring my hand. Moon gently pushes it back down. Nine, actually. Get nine? Why? Moon shrugs. I don't make the design choices. My best guess is the extra height helps with keeping an eye on the kids. Fair enough. Would you believe me if I said the adults are more freaked out by it than anyone else? Nah, I believe it. A lot of kids like climbing things and... You kind of look like a blue and white tree if I squint. To prove my point, I squint to a dramatic degree, putting my hands on my hips for effect. Stop doing that. No! Boon sighs, putting his hand on my face and lightly shoving me away as he makes his way back to the desk. Of course, I follow him back, stopping at my computer. Last one, Lion. I know. Last one. It feels kind of weird knowing it's almost over. Earlier, it felt like I was making no progress, and now I'm about to be ready to leave for the night. Glassy had a clock. It reads 6 a.m. I guess Moon caught me just stare at the computer. Lion? Huh? Do you think we'll see each other again after this? I don't have an answer for that. I'm not the one in charge, so I don't really have control over where I work here. All I can really do is shrug and be honest with him. To be honest, I don't know. I have no choice in this matter. You'd be surprised. Doubt it. About to switch a light on when Moon's alarm goes off. He snaps his gaze to the massive doors next to the desk as the cable drops. Give me some time to deal with this. If I'm not back in a few minutes, fix the next generator and get out. I don't get a chance to respond before Moon leaves in a hurry, hovering above, over the barrier and disappearing from sight. Time to play the waiting game, I guess. I wonder what he got alerted to anyway. Can't be that kid again, right? Actually, now that I think about it, I know next to nothing about the whole mess. Could be worth asking Vanessa about. About 10 minutes pass while I scroll away on my phone, trying to kill time and wait for Moon to return. Not sure what counts as a few minutes, but starting to feel like way too much time. Is it smart to try leaving this place alone when Moon was alerted? I don't know. It did say to get out if he didn't come back soon, though. You know what? The longer I'm here by myself, the more of a sitting duck I am. Chances are I can make a mad dash out of here and tell Moon some other time that I didn't feel safe sticking around. I'll make sure to set a command to turn the lights on before gathering my stuff and leave it by the desk for me to grab when I'm done. I'll make a quick drop next to the last few cables. Uh, I will skip this. I hop onto my feet before speedwalking to the desk to turn the lights off for the last time. Keeping a tight grip on my flashlight, I speedwalk to the structure to find the final generator. I can kind of narrow down where it would be after having some help from Moon in fighting them four separate times. It's a bit of a process and I make a few wrong turns here and there, but I'm able to find it on my own. Flipping the switch, a wave of relief washes me when washes over me when the LED flashes to green and the generator powers on without any problems. With the last test run done, I flip the switch back off and waste no time getting out of the structure and back to the desk. I press the button on the wall to open the door. Bag in hand, I walk out while constantly checking my surroundings for anything that looks suspicious. The staff only door enters my view and my pace quickens to a jog. I used my temporary ID to get in, finally ending my night here and being free to go home. After another staff-only door, I met with the cool night air, once to step into the massive parking lot. 
sparsely placed cars force this place to look a little less barren. A few lampposts illuminate the way to my own car. Another headache rears its ugly head, but I consider it another effect of my ten minutes of sleep. Key in hand, I slow my pace as I'm nearing the driver door. My head feels light when I press the button on my key to unlock the door. I grab the handle and notice something in the reflection of the driver's door window. Red eyes. Spinning around, I try swinging my fist at the familiar rabbit. She dodges. My vision becomes clouded in red and white. She violently grabs me by my neck, hitting me against the car door, and I'm unable to move. I try a claw at her costume hands as she gets disturbingly close to my face, her eyes practically blinding. Also, can I just mention the fact that she's like just pinning me to the to my car? It's kind of hot. <laughs> Uh, it is only then that she speaks. Are you having fun yet? I think I had a lot of fun with that. Thank you. But anyway, that was After Hours. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to play this game for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. Oddly enough, I think I like the last ending best. Like, who, th that ending kind of had a sense of finality to it. Of course, like, the rest of the game is, like, very well written. I... I was absolutely enamored by like Sun and Moon and like a little bit of Vanessa as well and I absolutely loved the art. But anyway, let me know what you guys thought of the game in the comments below. Thank you all so much for coming. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and as always, <laughs> I will be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion signing off. Ciao.